In this lecture, we're going to talk about streams. A stream is really an entity where a program can either write or read things to and from. Looking at the picture here, this is your C++ code. This is, for example, what we just wrote in the previous lecture. And uh, what we were doing when we did a C out to the console, we were writing on an output stream and we could see our output on the console. This was one scenario of using an output stream or using a stream in general. Streams are used in C++ to kind of abstract the operations of your application writing to the output or reading things from the input. For you to understand that, I'd like to clarify on what can be an input and what can be an output. An output can be one of these three things. It can be the console that we've seen already in the previous lecture, that blank, black and white screen. It can also be a file. Your application can write to a file, and we're going to have a chance to do that in this course. It can also write to the network to send things to the internet, for example. So for the output, you can have the console, you can have a file you write at, and you can have a network that you use to send things to the internet, for example. For the input, we can read things from the keyboard. We can also read things from a file in our C++ application. We can also read things from the network, and an application of that may be downloading things from the internet. So have this picture. A stream is really an abstraction of how you write things to the output and how you read things from the input. So now that you know this, I'd like to look at some of the streams that you already have available in C++ and that we can use. We have CIN, which is used to read things from the console. We're going to use this. We have COUT, which is used to write things out to the console. You've already seen this. We have CERR, which is used to write errors that you face in your application to the output. And we have a C log, which is used to log information. If you want to output some information about your application, you can do that using C log. So now that you know this, let's head to Qt Creator and use them so that you can see for yourself. Okay, so here we are in Qt Creator and we're going to create a new console application. You already know how to do that. File, new, you see this dialog, you choose non-cute project and you choose plain C++ application. We're going to call this one five streams and we're going to store it on our D drive. You can choose your own location if you like. We're going to hit next, next. We're going to choose our kit here. And after that, we're going to have our application here. In our streams, we've already used C out, so we can flag that here. C out. One thing I'd like you to see is that this C out thing is coming from this library, but I didn't make it clear in the last lecture. To make it clear, let's take out this line using namespace std and try to run our application. So hit the green button with the using namespace line taken out. Let's look at the compile output, run our application, and you see that we have errors in here. And what is it saying? C out was not declared in this scope. It is not recognizing C out. It is also not recognizing ENDL. It is because these things live in the standard library inside IO stream. And one way to solve this problem is to bring back our using namespace STD, which is kind of a way to say that if we call C out, we are calling C out from the standard library. This is one way to solve this problem by declaring the standard library that you're going to use using the line here, using namespace. Another way to solve this 
is to take out again this using namespace line and prefixing C out with the library that you want to take it from. So we can do it like this, std two columns and std two columns. And this way, the compiler knows where you are getting these things from. So if we run the application again, you're going to see that it's going to work without a problem. So this is a matter of style, what you want to use. I'm going to leave this here so that you know how to use it. And by now you have used C out to write things to the console. Another thing we can do is to use C er. And we're going to flag it like this. And the usage is really the same. So we say std C er. And we say there was an error. Okay, so we put a new line at the end of this as we used to do. We want our application to return after we do our thing. So we should do this at the end of the main function. So if we run our application, we're going to see the output of C out, which is going to say hello world. We're also going to see the output of C er, which is going to say there was an error. Let's run the application. And boom, there was an error. So looking at this, there is no way to differentiate it. It may be useful in some kinds of applications, and it is important for you to know now that you can output errors using stdcerr. The next thing we want to look at is C log. Okay, so we say C log and we say std C log. This is a log message. You do it like this. So you do std endl to put an end of line after this. And after this, we're going to have three lines of output. One is going to say, hello world. The other is going to say, there was an error. The other is going to say, this is a log message. Let's run the application. You see our three lines here. Hello world, there was an error. This is a log message. The next thing we want to do is to actually read things from the input. In this case, we're going to read Thanks from the keyboard, we're going to let the user type their name and we're going to output the name on the console on their behalf. Let's first flag this so that it's easy to track in the future. We're going to say CIN because that's what we're going to use. We want to let the user type in their name. And when they type it in, we store it in a variable that we're going to use to print it again so they can see what they just typed in. For that to work, we're going to need to store the user's name into a variable. That variable is going to be of string type. So we need to import the string class here, just like this. And after we do that, we declare our string variable. We declare it by saying std string name. Okay, std string is the type of the variable and we have its name and uh, the name of the variable is going to be name. So after this, we tell the user to type in their name. We do that by using std c out and say, please type in your first name. We're not going to go to the next line using ENDL because we want them to type the name right away. After we do this, we read in the name that they just typed in. And we do that by using STDCIN and two greater signs. And we follow that with the name of the variable that we're going to use to store that data. The variable is name. We put a semicolon to end the line. And by now we have the user's first name stored 
in our variable so we can output it. And the way we do that is we use std out again. Okay, so we say stdc out and say your first name is and we put two output characters here and we say the name of the variable which is name in this case so we're going to end the line here one thing you should notice here if it is the first time you see this is that we can split our output into different strings and this is useful if you want to put a defined string like this and a variable that you want to output to the console. For now, if we run the application, we're going to see the first three things we did before. And we're going to ask the user to type in their first name. When they finish typing their name in and hit the enter button, we're going to store the name in a variable that is called name. And uh, notice this greater signs for input and the less than signs for output. This is confusing for first time users, but you get used to this pretty quick. So let's run our application and see it in action. Hit the green button to run the application. You're going to see our three lines output for hello world. There was an error and this is a log message. And they ask us to type in our first name. My first name is Gakwaya. Hit enter and it tells me my first name. And by now you can write interactive applications that ask users to do things, do things with the data that the users give you, and then output things for the user to see. This is not very advanced, but it should give you an understanding of how you write interactive applications that can interact with the user. Okay, this covers all I had to say in this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to visit the data types that are available in C++ for you to use. You saw us use things like string. We didn't really explain them. We're going to do that in the next lecture. I'll see you there.